We made this wind-powered clock, the Liverpool Garden Festival, a couple of years ago. The wind-powered generator on top merely charges this battery. The battery powers the electronics, and the electronics supplies an impulse to this windscreen wiper motor, which actually drives the clock movement round every 30 seconds. Now, when I developed that clock unit, I did the electronics indoors in the workshop, and it worked perfectly, and I left it on test for about a fortnight. I brought it out here, installed it in the clock, had second thoughts that I'd connected it wrong, so I reconnected it, and this time I connected it backwards and blew the whole lot up, every transistor and every chip, and had to start from square one again. And as a friend said, it's easy to make something which is foolproof, but it's very difficult to make it idiot-proof. You can soon connect something backwards, and you can't see you've done anything wrong. You know, but when you, when you actually um, go to connect it up, you get a big bang, a puff of smoke, and all your work is gone. You've wasted a fortnight. I think it's because the electronic components don't move or give any indication of what they're there for that it's so easy to make mistakes like Rex's. The electronics in a television, which process the broadcast signal and power the loudspeaker and tube itself, are very complicated. But they're not quite as baffling as they first appear. One thing that makes electronics less intimidating to me is that all the circuits are made up of a relatively small number of different types of component. I can show you quite a lot of these just with a light bulb and a battery. A resistor just acts as a restriction and makes the light dimmer. So twice the resistance makes it dimmer still. A diode lets the electricity flow one way but not the other. A capacitor stores electricity, only letting the current flow until it is fully charged. It can then release its stored electricity again when connected straight to the bulb. A transistor often acts as a sort of switch. The tiny amount of electricity from a battery made of a potato can switch the main battery and power the headlight. In fact, over 90% of the components on this board are like the ones I've just shown you. The integrated circuits are just really just a lot of components all sandwiched together, mostly transistors. I do admit that when you start joining everything together, the circuits very quickly become very complicated. The other thing that helps to reduce my intimidation about electronics is that you often don't need precise knowledge of a circuit to mend a fault. When a repairman repairs your telly, some of the faults are blatantly obvious as soon as he takes the back off. Components are either burnt out or been smoking, and you can actually smell the pungent smell from some of the components actually burning. Other faults are fairly obvious, like um, dry joints on the solder. That's when the solder hasn't flowed properly onto the component on the circuit boards. Although the circuit looks really complicated, it can be rather likened to a road map of the British Isles. And uh, if you were travelling between London and Brighton, for instance, you're not really worried about what the roads are doing around Glasgow and Edinburgh, and the same really applies to a TV set. Like reading a map, you can soon find the area you're interested in without detailed knowledge of the circuit boards. You can then narrow the fault down to a few suspect components. We've managed to get a picture out of most of these old scrap tellies. From the outside, they don't look very different from modern tellies, but inside, things have changed quite radically in the last 15 years. For a start, the old televisions needed an elaborate set of adjustments. There were so many knobs that they were rarely set up accurately. Most of these adjustments have now become obsolete simply by ingenious refinement of the tube design. The older sets also used much more power and generated much more heat, and heat isn't very good for electronics. 
Finally, instead of the individual valves and transistors, modern sets use integrated circuits. A modern set has less than half the number of components of a 15-year-old one. It looks as if there's almost nothing inside in comparison. All this has made tellies much cheaper and simpler to build, and it's also made them more reliable. I think they're the only machine in this series that's actually become more reliable in recent years. I think it's quite wonderful that something that so recently was stretching the limits of modern technology can now be achieved so easily. The days when people rented their tellies because they were so expensive and they needed mending so often are really gone forever. And all these old elaborate tellies, none of which are working properly anyway, are not really worth mending. But instead of just throwing them away, we decided to give them a rather more dramatic end, particularly as it's the end of the series. <laughs>